Y'all see this jig? This one right here in my hand? Yeah, I'm gonna catch a fish on it. Give me like two seconds here. What'd I tell you? Yep, I'm a wizard, I know. And it's a big one. And it's a big one. Let's go. Oh yes. Bring it around here. How's it going folks? Welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. Today, we're gonna teach you guys about one of my absolute favorite techniques, fishing a jig just like this one in some deep grass and catching fish like this. So uh, as always, let's talk about it. What do 20 pound fluoro, 7.4 heavy rod, and an 8.3 to 1 gear ratio rod all have in common? They are used to catch bigs on a jig. How's it going guys? My name is Tyler Anderson and welcome back to the channel called Tyler's Rule Fishing. My goal on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers. And uh, you know, I've made videos in the past few weeks, even the past few years, about how to fish around grass. Uh, so I'll have several of those videos linked below, but there is no better lure, in my opinion, uh, up here in Minnesota, really anywhere around the country, uh, to catch bigger fish and more fish consistently around aquatic vegetation. I'm talking about deeper aquatic vegetation today than a jig. But I wanna talk real quick about what I'm doing in this video. You're gonna see tons and tons of fish catches. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned. I'll have all the timestamps, of course, down on the bottom of the screen as I always do. You guys can go skip ahead of the fish catches, but I think you're gonna miss some awesome information here in the next few minutes. So uh, let's strap in and sit down and talk about what is jig fishing on deep grass. So if y'all have been watching my videos over the past few weeks, uh, you know that grass equals bass. And if you're not fishing in the grass, you're probably not catching many bass. And that's just how it is. So I don't wanna go into that a whole lot. You guys should already know that there's tons of uh, uh, you know, habitat and everything around grass, vegetation, that's where the bass are. Today I want to talk about forage species. Bass, of course, have to eat something. So in some lakes they're eating crawfish, some lakes they're eating bait fish. Over there, that bass over there just ate something, I heard it splash. They are always eating something. Bass is two main things, uh, three main things in life. They want to eat, mate, and not get eaten. And most of the time they're focused on eating, and that's good for us as anglers. And so today in this lake, it's a small Minnesota lake, there are so many bluegill. You'll see on my, my graph as I show you guys some clips later on, there are probably a million plus bluegill in this lake. It is unbelievable the, the, the quantity of bluegill, which means the bass have no shortage of food which means that you have to put your lure the place where the bass are in order to catch them. They're probably not gonna chase down your lure from a long way away because they can go eat a bluegill that's two feet to the right. Why would they eat your jig that's seven foot to the, to the left of them? And in this scenario, sure, there's gonna be tons of bass, but you're gonna have to put your lure right in front of them. That way they have the best chance of eating it. And that's why I think this technique of flipping and casting a jig around deep grass is one of the best ways to catch them. So before we hop on the front deck and do some more instructional stuff, uh, showing y'all exactly what I'm doing with my rod tip, how I'm pulsating the jig around the grass to enact a strike from those fish. Before we get into any of that, what is the gear that you need? You need, especially in this scenario, when the grass is not necessarily super thick, but thick enough, you need a seven, at least a seven two rod, seven foot two inch rod. I use a seven four heavy. Y'all know this is my favorite rod Lose makes. It's a seven four heavy uh, TP1 black speed stick. I've got it on the Lose Tournament Pro Reel in the eight three to one gear ratio with the custom red handles. The reason for that is because uh, I put red handles on there so I know that it's a fast gear ratio reel. All of my reels in the front deck that are fast have uh, have red handles on them. I've got 20 pound Seaguar and Vizex fluorocarbon, super, super strong. Uh, if I'm fishing around any sort of thicker grass or dirty water clarity, I'll just go straight braid, 50 pound Seaguar Smackdown uh, to maybe a fluorocarbon leader. And then of course I've got the Outcast Stealth Fighter Jig. That is all that you need to make this technique a success. Now, can can you uh, throw it on something different? Yes, you can. Uh, but as I'll talk about in the video, one, without a high speed gear ratio reel, you're not gonna be able to effectively make a whole lot of flips. Like you're gonna see, this is not a game of making a long cast and slowly working it back to the boat. 
The fish have tons of bluegill to eat, and so you have to present your lure in as many grass little pockets and areas as possible. That way the fish doesn't have to move, he just sees it and he eats it. So it's more of a game of efficiency and making fast flips and casts, working your lure fast, getting it back in the boat, reeling it in, you know, calling that cast quits and making the next one. So that is why the fast gear ratio is important. Oftentimes these fish will eat your jig and run straight at you. That's why the long rod is necessary and the thick line is necessary because you're fishing around grass. So let's hop on the front deck and show you guys exactly what I'm doing before we get back to some awesome fish catches. So now that we are on the front deck, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm doing with my rod and reel uh, to catch these fish. So when it comes to fishing deep grass, you have to, well, you have to find the grass. And so out here, we don't have much grass. Up there, we have tons of grass, and right in the middle is the grass line. Fishing grass lines is, we all know, one of the best ways to catch them, but the way this jig excels is by fishing the deepest possible area on the grass. And so I'm gonna either find that by trial and error, by casting out there and basically dragging the jig until I can't find any grass anymore, I don't feel any grass, that's where the edge of the grass line is, uh, by using your electronics or in water that's clear, I can actually most of the time see that grass line. So I'm gonna make a short cast out there just to the edge of the grass peel out line until it gets to the bottom and as soon as it gets to the bottom I'm gonna pop my reel close close the uh, close the bail drop my rod to my hip and give it five or six shakes maybe maybe seven or eight shakes and then as soon as I feel a piece of grass kind of pop it off this is a reaction type bite uh, you know these bass are just sitting there they want to see a bluegill that looks injured or looks um, just different than the rest of them and that is what your jig does so again make a short flip out there no long casts uh, it's all about a game of efficiency let us sink to the bottom start hopping it. The, uh, the pulsating of the jig is very, very important because you want your skirt down there to kind of to, uh, to pulsate. And so the vibration of your rod is very, very important. You wanna make sure that you are uh, jigging it up and down so the jig can be pulsating, the skirt can be doing its thing. And uh, that is what triggers these bass to bite. A bite's gonna feel basically like a, uh, a piece of grass that you have down there. So it takes a little bit of time to understand the difference between the two. But once you feel that bite, you just reel down absolutely give it the business and uh, you'll catch some big fish. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I cannot reiterate enough though, you wanna make as many short little flips and casts as possible. Uh, these bass most of the time are just gonna be okay with your boat being on top of them, especially in dirtier water. Uh, and so making a long cast is not necessary to catching these fish. But you wanna make sure that you're in and around that thick, deep grass where these bass are hanging. And of course around bluegill if you can. Uh, drop any comments below if I missed anything. Don't believe I did. Uh, of course, strong hook set's important you want to make sure you're getting these fish out of those grasses as soon as possible so they can't get you all tied up. But I say we catch some dang fish. No way. I watched that fish eat it on live scope. That was so cool. That was so cool. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and there's more down there. Oh, this is so cool. I'll explain in a second what I'm doing, folks. Oh, hello. No. No! Literally watch this fish come up and eat it on live scope. All right, let's readjust. Where were they at? Where were they at? They're right over there. Y'all, yeah, live scope has absolutely changed the way that I fish. It is crazy. I'm not joking, y'all. This is cool. This is cool. Oh, it's two casts in a row on a jig on a grass line. <laughs> Live scope ain't just for jerk baiting and drop shotting. <laughs> here we go. Let's go for three in a row. Yeah, I'm just gonna catch one for y'all right here. <laughs> I think I'm in a school of fish right now. There's one. Got him. I mean, y'all can feel free to cast right here. Holy <laughs> Yeah, you're catching large ones right here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they're, uh, they're deeper than y'all are fishing. Yeah, no, how yeah, I mean, this, how deep is this area? Right 12 here? feet right here. 12 feet? Yeah, so like if you see the grass, literally go to where you can't see the grass anymore. There's still grass there, it's just too deep to see. That's where they're sitting. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because every kid and his brother is out here. No, yeah, that's fishing, noticed, fishing from the bank. People are just laying all like on the borders. Uh-huh. But so, Okay, so not like not like towards the middle where it's like 30 or No, no. Oh, like, uh, here comes another one. No way. That's four casts in a row. <sighs> I'm using a jig, yeah. Do y'all want one of the jigs I'm throwing? I don't think we have any jigs right now. I, I got plenty of jigs. So you take the bait and you like line the trailer exactly where the hook is going to bend out. So you know where it's like where the hook starts to bend. So you know where to poke it out. So I know it's like seven or eight ridges in. 
So I'm gonna literally rig it right down the middle, keeping it as straight as possible. And then I'll poke it out right there at like the same mark that I saw. And then you thread it all the way on over the jig like that, kind of pinch it. And that right there is a, a jig and a trailer. And so you're gonna lose some trailers because you're gonna have small fish that bite the end. You'll yeah, set right. the hook and it'll it'll pull it down. But yeah, there's two for y'all. Yeah, thank you, man. And like I said, too shallow here, way yeah. too much grass. Yeah. 30 feet, no grass. So you wanna get like right on the edge. Okay. And you just you just cast it out there and like literally shake it until you hit a piece of grass and then you pop it off. And the fish eat it right when you like pop it off. Well, all right, I'm gonna take your word for it, man. <laughs> and in case you don't have any success today, just find my channel that's this, on the side of the boat here, and I'll have this video out in two weeks or so. Highly real fishing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you may, you may see yourself in the video. That might be awesome. <laughs> and message me if you catch any on those jigs. Oh, I yeah, definitely no, will. Really Heck yeah. Good to see you guys. Yeah, thank you. Alright, let's get back to catching them. So I might as well show y'all what I can see on live scope. So I'm looking out in front of me, that's 10 feet in front of me, 20 feet, 40 feet. I'm seeing these little stalks of grass that of course it's 12 and a half feet deep i can't see down there in this water even though it's clear water i can't see that and so live scope is allowing me to see the grass that nobody else is casting to and if they are it's it's accidental because they're just casting out in the middle and hoping they touch something i'm again i'm not paid to say this but garmin if, if you want to sponsor me i would say that's a wise investment i don't i don't know when i told skeeter it was a wise investment look where it ended up you know i'm, I'm just saying there's one. I knew there'd be a bass around there. Had to be. Oh, well, let me show you all exactly what we're fishing around here. Hopefully my shadow can show you. All that stuff down there on the right, right there, that's bluegill. So let me uh, let me flip my lure, cast my lure down. Y'all see it falling right there. Oh, you kind of missed it. Let me hop it. Boom, there's my lure falling down. Bluegill's attacking it. Now it's below them right there. Follow it to the, follow it to the ground. There's one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, a little bit nicer one. Not a giant, no giants today yet, but just some all around good quality fish. Oh, gosh, they fight so hard. This one's not bad. Not a bad fish here. That's a two, two and a half pounder. Oh, boop, forgot to mark all of my catches. I'm running an angler trip right now and got quite a few catches. So there's one right there. Gonna wait a few seconds and then I'll mark another one. Boom, for those two fish I caught. I really want to see how many fish I'm gonna to catch today. I'm guessing it's got it's gonna be over 50, I think. Oh, there's one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A good one. A good one. Right on that grass right there. I would not have caught that fish without live scope, boys and girls. It is crazy. I literally saw that grass in 18 foot of water right there on the left. Look at how he ate it. Look at that. Got him. Oh gosh, I got a fish, I got a fish, I got a fish. Yes, <laughs> had my phone out. That was funny. I realized I had a fish and I put my phone away as soon as possible. Ah. It's just crazy how good the outcast jig gets them. In the top of the mouth every single time. That is just great. Let's go ahead and ding that one up. There's one. Oh yeah. Another one. Appreciate it. No big ones right now, just a bunch of fun ones though. Lots of fish. There we go. <laughs> He's small. You a dink. That's a fish. so much. Gosh, I hate Pike can go die in a hole that it digs for itself. Ugh, I hate pike so much. That's a fish. Yes. There we go. There we go. Stay down. Not a bad one. Not a giant either. But oh gosh, they fight so hard. That's the cool thing about these grass fish is that you give them no time to get their energy out. So they fight real hard. Look at that. Thank you, buddy. Have a nice life. Is that a fish? That feels like a fish. It feels like a bluegill though, but I'll set the hook anyways. Oh my gosh. Wow. Basically the size of a bluegill. <laughs> 
Well, folks, that's going to do it for our video today. Hopefully you enjoyed. I definitely caught quite a few fish, and uh, I, I, I really hope that I fully flushed out the last of my grass videos for a while, but it's just so cool to be able to catch fish on deep grass lines that nobody else is really targeting, and those fish just hit it with such power and, and, and energy. It's just cool. So if you all enjoyed it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That would mean a whole lot to me. And uh, make sure to check out the tackle I have linked below as always. I've got discount codes for all this stuff down below. And uh, make sure y'all, whenever you buy your tackle, buy through my tackle warehouse links below. The Stealth Fighter is an incredible jig. I, I, you guys saw it today. I caught like, whatever. I'll check how many fish it was. 30 something fish today. Crazy. Awesome day. We'll see y'all next time on TRF. There's one. Oh gosh. We'll end the day on that one. <laughs>